and welcome to the Virtualization in Cloud Security Podcast and with Mike Foley from VMware Technical Marketing for vSphere Security. And I'm Edward Holetke, and I'm the uh, Principal Analyst and Virtualization and Security Analyst for the Virtualization Practice. And we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of talking about cloud and virtualization, we're actually going to talk about consumer security. Some tips we can give you as consumers of how to protect yourself this holiday season and into the future. Okie dokie. Very simple. I mean, this is really not what we normally talk about. Some of the, there's a lot of overlap though. One of the things you just brought up pre, pre-show was two-factor authentication. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have two-factor authentication turned on in Facebook? I don't use I Facebook. Bet most people don't. And if you don't, you should, because if people get into your Facebook account, they get into everything and they can then become you. It's just not a yeah. good thing. And uh, even probably as a parent, probably even more concern is your young, uh, your young adult children. Uh, are they using two-factor auth because a bully or someone nefarious gets in there and starts posting stuff? It can get real ugly real fast. And you end up having police involved and yeah, you don't want to go there. So if you can enable two-factor auth, and by the way, two-factor auth for consumers is not sending its SMS to your cell phone. Sorry, not it. Right. It has to so, be so for device. example, if you are using you know a, a cell phone and you have the Facebook app on it, you can run two-factor auth on, oh, you can run two-factor auth on your Facebook app. Yes. And that's relatively simple to do and relatively simple to set up. But remember, don't, I mean, people get your phone. This is for the kids or your family. If they, if you have two factor auth and you're sending everything to your phone, they take the people, kids share their phones all the time. Therefore, you know, you really do need a second device or a second method. Make sure people are using passwords they don't share. Right. Right. Now, you so, can do that with a password manager. Some people suggest using those, but remember, there's been a number of hacks against those. So you need to look at them, too. Yeah. Well, one you know, there's, seriously there's... Hacked. what's that? It wasn't one password. Last, no, LastPass. LastPass, sorry. Last yeah, pass but they're storing your credentials on their servers. Yes. Whereas a tool like OnePassword stores everything in an encrypted file, that file may live out on Dropbox, and that file is only open only opened uh, with the very secure password that you have set, and, and that does another password one two three. And another authentic another method of authentication is possible. Actually, if your bank or credit card companies have two factor auth, very good. Oh, by all means, please turn it on. Please turn it on. Another good thing, let's just think about this one. If you are shopping online and you are a little concerned about you losing your credit card, another good way to do that is actually get one of the credit cards that allow you to do a one-off a one-off credit card number. Yep. So that you yep. are safe online. It's used for one purchase. That would be great. Right. Right. Um, you know, so, for example, if you're using, um, if you're using an iDevice, you, oops, uh, you can log in very simply with, whoop, okay. come on Siri, shut up. Uh, you can log in very simply just with uh, one touch password, yes. if not using the right finger, there we go. That's a form of authentication. Is it the best form of authentication? No. Is it better than having no password or no passcode? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's actually very hard. It's getting harder and harder to break that because you actually need a living thumb. Or yes. Finger. And it doesn't yeah. have the, to be your thumb. The, it can be any finger you want. Yeah, I, I actually use multiple fingers because, God forbid, what happens if I get in an accident and I lose the one finger that I had on my phone? I'm screwed. And now you actually... may even consider as a backup if you trust your spouse or someone who is your... Um, your um, uh, executor of your will to consider even putting one of their fingers on and your if phone. If you have children, make sure you as a parent have your finger or fingers as part of that as well. 
Exactly. You need to protect your kids. I mean, the other thing is, I mean, we do know recently the whole VTech mess with 4.8 million names and 200,000 kids. That was spooky. It's spooky. If you so for those to... folks that don't understand that, you know, you buy a, a toy from VTech. Uh, they have all sorts of little toys with cameras and everything else. And those have been completely hacked. And there are, if you have kids and you have VTech stuff, their pictures are probably outside of your control. Absolutely. And it's still creepy. I mean, it's actually, there is a number of sites, a site, if you have these devices, you want to know if you've been hacked. There's actually a number of sites that say, am I on that owned list? And I'll put it in the show notes. I actually use it myself just to check, am I on any of this stuff? And right. as a parent, well worth doing to check not only yourself, but your kids. Right. The VTech database is in there, by the way, so you can check. Oh, good. So good. there's a number of them. The only ones that aren't on there is like the OMP and a few other things that are considered classified. Yeah. <laughs> That's a different story entirely. So yeah, it's got, a whole, that is a whole other podcast. <laughs> it's a whole other podcast. But then you have, you know, okay, so another thing is, is during this holiday season while you're shopping, and actually probably a good thing to do, enable zero dollar alerts for your bank account and credit cards. In other words, when you charge or buy over zero dollars, oh, right. it'll send you an alert. Mine right. comes to my iWatch. Every time I go out and I get a shop, it's like I just double check the number to make sure it was the right number I signed on. Nice. So I, I get an check immediate and see alert. if my credit union supports that. If your bank doesn't or credit union really strongly suggests that they do. Yes. But all the major banks have zero. You have an alert that you can set a minimum dollar amount. Mine mm -hmm. is set at zero. Even one penny will give me an alert. Now, that's a really good idea. And the reason behind that is if your account is compromised, the bad guy will try to make a very, very, very tiny transaction. Why? just to see if he has the right credentials. Exactly. And then he saves those credentials for when he really wants to go big and go home. And you, once you get something like that and you do not know what it is, if you are available to change your password, do it. <laughs> right. Make sure. Right. So those are things that you can do. And the other, um, one of the other things is, let's think post Christmas, if you've unwrapped all those wonderful gifts, don't post them on Facebook or Twitter or social media of any form. Just don't. The criminals, I mean, I'm talking about the thieves here, are you trolling those areas just looking for people to say, I got this wonderful new toy that cost me a couple hundred thousand dollars. Hey, or a couple thousand dollars. They're looking for these. Yeah, my, my, my wife hasn't bought me the Ferrari yet, so. I'm waiting for the, the Corvette myself, but. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy with the vet. I'd be happy with the new vet. That's really sweet. But yeah. think about it. The thieves are going to be looking for people that have big boxes outside their house for trash. Yes. So definitely cut up your boxes before you put them in the trash. Yes. Or consider them. actually uh, cutting the labels off the boxes and put those in the trash on another day with the labels completely destroyed. Yes. Just cut them up. Get rid of them. But you don't even have to put them all out on the same day. Right. Say different weeks. I mean, I we do this all the time. We just, when we get a, a box of whatever, even during the regular year, not even during the holidays, we get a big box. We just we just decompose it to its compose, compart, basically its component parts of one foot or two foot by two foot, which is what our recycler allows us to do, and just put them in the bin. No one sees them. We drive down the street and people say, oh, I got a big TV box. So they must have right. had a big TV. And the thieves are looking for that too. And it doesn't even have to be a big box. It can be a small box like a Apple product box. Oh, yeah. Right? Apple uh, product I'm actually, I've product. actually been giving serious consideration to building a big giant box outside my front steps that with a FedEx logo and a UPS logo and an Amazon logo on it just so that the UPS guy or FedEx guy, when he shows up, he puts the, the, the stuff in there and it has a lock on it that, that uh, is unlocked and he can just lock it and go, right? And now, at least if I'm not home, the stuff's not sitting out in the weather and it's not sitting out there waiting for someone to walk, for, walk with it. 
And uh, I, I, we just saw up the street this holiday season right at a major road, a crossroad. Everybody can see it. Three Amazon boxes stopped, t stacked all on top of each other. Very One very large, couple of small ones at, the, at 5 p.m. at night. And everybody saw it. It's like I was surprised they would be there by 5.05. .05. Yeah. Now, yeah. one thing is, is that some of the companies, if you know your UPS driver and you know your FedEx driver and it's the same person over and over again, you can train them to use your drop lockbox. A lot of them won't. Right. So you need to have that relationship, which is really worth building because they know you, you know them. But if you can't and you you have neighbors, use your, have your neighbors pick up your stuff. Yep. Yeah, sometimes uh, that $25 gift certificate uh, um, for your aunt, for the UPS guy who's always delivering your Amazon stuff might be worth it. It may be. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to have those relationships with your neighbors. You have to have relationships with, like, like yesterday we saw a moving truck coming to our neighborhood and going, no one's moving. Right. We saw it back up. We went off and investigated it. And as a good neighbor, we just wanted to know what was going on and make sure no one's house was being removed, everything removed from it. Granted, we found the people and they said, yeah, yeah, they're moving in stuff, not out. But it's something to pay attention to. And they do the same thing for us. So we've got a couple of neighbors around the neighborhood are actually helpful. But if you live out in the boonies, a lockbox, know your, know your drivers really, really well. Yeah. Especially what, like, what other what other techie stuff can we recommend for good holiday security? If you're traveling, do not post it on Facebook or social media, and do not use one of these check-in apps from the from the airport. People will know, and they'll look at it. That these again are going to say, "Oh, they're not home." This is yeah. I don't allow. I don't. I don't have my public. Uh, I don't have any sort of public stuff on my Facebook. Neither do I. Mine's all business, but there are a lot of people. Well, what that. I mean is, is you go to unless you're my friend, you see nothing. And that's what you need to set up. Right. So you real and one. So one of the things you really need to do with Facebook is always be reviewing your privacy settings. Yes. Because they like to change stuff underneath you. They may send you an email. They may put up a tiny little box way up in the upper corner for about a, an eighth of a second saying privacy things have changed. But uh, always be reviewing your privacy settings on Facebook and all the other social media places. Exactly. And Twitter is really a bad one because they have everything like um, they, everybody checks in and it appears on Twitter. Yeah. Twi Twitter is anybody can get to anything. Yep. So, and, you know, that's just the nature of the game. In the thieves, I mean, the good thieves, <laughs> to be honest, are watching and monitoring this. They want to find out when you're not home. Right. Or they want to find out, oh, you're having Aunt Margaret come over and they know where Aunt Margaret lives. Don't do that either. Give serious consideration to turning off location services for things like Twitter and Facebook. Yes. Right. Uh, if you're posting something that is going to be accessible to anybody, you probably don't want to have location services on. One of the things I really wish a lot more uh, app vendors would do is allow you to have location services turned on in specific locations. Oh, that'd be really nice. Right? So yeah, yeah. I have no problem with posting here, uh, you know, um, I'm at work, right? Or, or something, or, you know, out here in shed quarters. Um, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. Right? Um, I'm home, so. Right. But maybe not having it turned on when I'm in Spain. Or not having it turned on when I enter an airport. Right. Right. Or so geolocation Disney, location even, services yeah, and as a service. Not <laughs> turned on when I'm at Disney or something like that. Like, yeah. Or any type of big family event, having it be easy to turn on and off or make it so limited. Have it settable with policy. I would, I, I would like that idea. Yeah, even even if the app says, "Hey, um, you're outside of some specific locations that you say it's okay to post," do you, are you sure you want me to do this for you? Yeah. Right. Uh, it, that's one of the things that really bugs me about uh, software developers is they don't think through some of these scenarios well, and offer offer to the customer 
the, are you sure you really want to do this stupid thing? I'm not saying we should idiot proof things because after all, a better idiot is born every minute. Um, but at least offer people that pause to make them think, wait a minute, do I really want to do this? Because, you know, sometimes you're really caught up and you're like, click, 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 click. And you went, oh God, what did I just do about two days later? And these are things, I mean, granted, we're going to say that those, those are something we want the developers to do, but yep. you've got to also take into the fact that most developers are not security people. They're not paranoid enough. They don't think about this. Yep. And a lot of consumers don't know what they don't know. So the key is, if you are using Twitter and Facebook, turn off location services or any social media, it's a good thing to do. Right. When you travel or when you have other people traveling. So I would definitely do that. Um, one of the few other things that I was thinking about actually came in from Todd Scalzot. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, you mean Scott? <laughs> he's going to kill me now. <laughs> he's going to kill you. Todd Scalzot is a good friend of ours, and he works for a security company, and I'm not going to say which one. If he wants to, he can. And he came up with a, a great list, and one of the nice ones was, you know, he said, turn on 2FA if you could. I'm actually saying if you have it for your bank accounts and credit card accounts, do it. You can even use Google's authenticator. It doesn't make any difference. Just turn it on. Um, and, you know, these are all really great things. If you have identity fraud protection from because of one of these breaches, um, double check it. Make sure you're okay. That's a good one to have. Um, make sure your bank sends you a chip-enabled card. Yeah, the the chip and pin stuff. Where it's actually you want chip and sign. Chip and pin means that different things. So you really want a chip enabled card so that that authentication to the bank or credit card vendor is actually secured better. He actually said, um, "Yep, I have one too." The chip. He said, um, "Use different passwords across services. Your Amazon password should not be your banking password." Yes, absolutely. And don't use um, don't use passwords that have a common root. And don't make them all close together. In other words, if you say your password is password one, two, three, password one, two, three, four is not good enough. Right. Matter of fact, password anything is not good enough. So don't right. use it. You know, let's just say let's just say your root is bubbles. And for your um, for your credit card account, it's bubbles one, two, three. And for your mortgage account, it's bubbles three, four, five. That is just bad, bad practice. Seriously, seriously consider using uh, a password manager. I myself, I'm a huge fan of one password. I have, uh, let's see, how many accounts? I have 480 items in my pass in in one password with over 80 uh, 343 logins yeah. how am i going to remember all of those and, and it can turn me. around and it can use a generated password i have no idea for example what my facebook 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 password is i actually remember my passwords i don't i i'm like that but not everybody is but i don't have as many now one thing is is that if you are with your spouse it's consider making a a using one password or something for all of your digital assets yep and put that in a safe lot and make a note of what all of them it doesn't make any difference if it's a social media one a bank anything just get a digital inventory of all your accounts so that you can when something happens to you or if something happens to you it's part of your will Right. That so way your the, spouse has the, access. The, the way I would handle that um, for some accounts that we are joint on, I could create a separate vault in one password that both of us have access to. Yes. Right. Because I may have work passwords that really shouldn't be seen by anyone. Is really my wife has no real need to see that. Right. But be careful certainly, because... certainly we may have the need to have joint account passwords that we are that we share. Uh, if that doesn't work for you, like I said, you can let her use one finger to open the, the one password on your phone. 
Well, I mean, for example, I'm thinking about insurance accounts, mortgage accounts. I'm thinking about all your bank accounts and investment accounts. I'm thinking about anything that would be considered your digital life that they normally may or may not have access to. They may not be shared. They may not be joint. They may not even be able to do the like entrust for type of things that some banks are able to do. You need to make sure that you're anything you deal with that has anything to deal with your digital life is, is banked somewhere. One password's a great place. Yep. Yep. So one of the, some of the things that I have in one password is an image of my driver's license with, uh, great the for travel. text of the driver's not, I have my passport in here. I have a whole bunch of software licenses in here. Um, if you are traveling, do this because you, if you lose your license or lose your passport and you're traveling outside the na your nation, this is the only way you can prove who you are. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, a life it's extremely handy to have. Can't see it. Don't want to. Oh, all right. Um, it's extremely handy to have that sort of stuff there. I mean, you have to fill something out with your passport number. I pull out my phone and look that rather than passport itself hunting down my passport but if you're traveling and you have to go to the, the embassy to prove who you are having this information yes. is crucial exactly assume it's going to be stolen and if you don't when you're traveling around the nation around the world you need something like this one password's great for that another one is look for some home monitoring that tells people that you get alerted when people come up and show up at your house Yes, uh, one of the things I've been uh, wanting to add to our to the uh, to the shed quarters and to the the Shea Foley is um, a set of cameras. I did that at Shea Haletki. I always have them, and I used them for various various reasons. My my old office was at the back of the property. I needed to see all the UPS drivers and things that were making deliveries. Yep. That's great for that purpose, but also they record so you can actually capture anybody driving into your driveway and sticking around or sitting out at the end of the driveway. But if you're going to do this, make sure you use high speed cameras. Yeah. And multi scan cameras are best. Yeah. If you can't do that for some of the other places, you don't necessarily need that level of quality, but they're good. That, um, that almost sounds like a whole other podcast. It is a whole other podcast. And I actually know <laughs> just the person to get involved with that. Yeah. I'm Scott. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, Todd. The, um, but the, when you think about this one, you are there. One of the key things about all this protect security for consumer is really about protect your family, protect your money, protect yourself. And you've yes. got to figure out no one's going to do it for you. No one's going to do it for you. You've got to have all that information. I mean, I have a, my neighbor. He has a camera on his bicycle just in case there's an accident because he won't remember it. He's trying to evade it. Right. He needs to know if he made the mistake or somebody else did. A lot of cyclists are looking for that. So this is a great gift. If you have a cyclist in the family, get him a camera for the bike. And for you bike know what? They are not inexpensive. I mean, I was looking. Uh, they're on, not expensive. Sorry, they're not an, expensive. Uh, uh, I was seeing emails coming through through some of the vendors like Rakuten and yeah. stuff like that, of uh, like dashboard cameras for for cars nowadays, twenty thirty bucks. Yeah, and I saw a couple that just mounted up right above your lights, and these are great. Just yeah, use them because this will help you in an emergency. Yeah. No one can remember everything. So, yeah. again, the whole goal about the consumer security for the consumer and all the advice we just gave, and I'm going to give a, a, a read through a bunch of it again, is about protecting your family, your money, yourself. Exactly. And not necessarily in that order. Whatever, pick an order you like. I personally will protect my family first. Right. My bank accounts I'll protect, and then myself is last. But we're all going to have to do that. So as Mike is going to cut this short, we are a couple things is let's go through these very quickly. Um, enable two factor authentication if you can. Any type of two factor. Every single place you can. Every single place you can. Use a password manager like one password. That stores everything wherever you want. Um, 
If you have identity fraud protection because you have been hacked by OPM or whatever, sign up for it. It's free most of the time. Yep. And keep it going. I have signed up for it. Mine was years and years ago because of a disk got mislaid. I kept mine going and it monitors for me and I get alerts within minutes if there's a problem. Yep. A very good tool to have. Set your alerts on your bank balance, bank charges and credit card charges to zero dollars. So you get an alert whenever it goes over zero dollars. Pay really close attention to the small ones and things from coming outside the nation. Yes. Okay. Um, we mentioned the fingerprint. Please don't use it as your sole form of authentication. Try having, you can use your fingerprint to open your phone, but use passwords to open up everything else, please. You really don't want that. If you have children and they have an eye device or whatever has a device that has a fingerprint scanner, and pretty much every modern device does, the adult should be part, parent should be part of that scheme. Mm -hmm. And if your spouse needs access, give her access or him access. It makes no difference. It still may be your device, but in an emergency, they may need to be able to get in. Also, use different passwords across all your services, hence why we need something like 1Password. Mike, what do you, you have 300, 500 and some odd? 380. 380. I have a close to that. If you have a, take your digital life and put it in 1Password so that in case of an emergency, someone knows where to go for all those passwords, for all those accounts that they may need access to to close them out, do whatever they need. Because to be honest, if you do not do that, it's lost money. Right. It's lost and to your family permanently. At, at, at least uh, write down on a piece of paper the really interesting password that you have that locks your 1Password vault. And, stick it uh, the and, then, and then probably the, the Dropbox location of that file. And then um, put that in your family safe. Yep. Because that in a sealed envelope because it if in case of an emergency your your spouse needs to you know get get at your 401k or or some other sort of stuff they don't have to go through hoops and at, at a really difficult time and by the way there's now lawyers that will help you set up a digital life will so yes you may want to contact. this is actually relatively new we talked about this about a, a year ago and it's becoming much more prevalent now because it's so important and that's yeah, you may even you may even if you know because of the divorce rate in this country, you may even put half of the password in the family safe and half of the password with your lawyer. You got it. It works out. Yeah. Um, a few th other things is try thinking about if you're online and you're a little worried about the security, don't store your credit cards in the Amazons of the world or whatever. Try not storing your um, credit card numbers inside the merchant accounts. You don't need to. You have them with you or you have an ability to type them in. I know it's a convenience, but it actually adds a breach possibility. Um, another one is to use chip enabled cards. They're new. Yep. They're only ones accepted in Europe actually these days. Or things like Apple Pay. Or Apple Pay. You can use that through this or some other way. Um, also, if you get boxes and you're going to put them out on the curb, discombobulate them, decompose them, put them in a recycling bin. Do not put the big box. I just bought this big piece of equipment or this really small box that says I bought an Apple TV or whatever. People, thieves are looking for that. So don't even give them the ability. Yep. And one last thing is work out with your neighbors or a lockbox mechanism for packages so that you have no packages on your door. That's a key giveaway that you're not home. Right. Um, all those things, those are our current set of consumer security items. I imagine we're going to actually do this podcast again with uh, with somebody else besides Mike and keep the rope ball going. This is something different than what we normally do, but the consumer needs to pay attention to themselves. They have to protect their family themselves, their children, their money, their re their resources, their assets. And this is one way to do it. And and as, as on the ball as all of our listeners and watchers are, sometimes might find a, a, a nugget of information that might be helpful. The the old, I didn't think of that. And I keep on coming up ones. 
I didn't think about people keep on telling me I sent out a, a list a, a, a um, email to a bunch of my security friends and I got that and a few other people got it and I keep on getting things that I actually never think about yep for example one of the ones oh also big one don't shop from a cop using the Wi-Fi in a, a Starbucks or a coffee shop please just don't yeah Bad idea um, that we can explain that later, but in all intents and purposes, that's a wide open network. Just don't bother. Right. So, Mike, thank you very much. You have any last thoughts on this? Um, stay safe, stay happy. Happy wife, happy life too. Yep. All right. Thank you, Mike. Have a great night. See ya. Good night.